Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallen 4 video. And for this video, I'm going to be showing y'all everything wrong with the heavy weapons in Fallout 4. I hope you're ready for this rant, because the heavy weapons are the most disastrous weapon category in the entire game. You may need to take a few extra doses of cringe away while watching this, because their designs are absolutely cursed, and some of them completely disregard basic mechanics, making them rather unimmersive. I know it's just a game, but you have to admit that the weapon designs in Fallout 4 are subpar, and they could have been so much better. It's especially disappointing what Bethesda did to the heavy weapons, because Fallout 4 strongly encourages you to use power armor, yet the weapons designed to be used with power armor all have terrible designs that ruin your power trip fantasy. I will not stand for such blatant disrespect towards heavy weaponry, so I'm going to scrutinize each weapon design seen in Fallout 4 and point out where exactly they went wrong. While I'm at it, I'm also going to assign each weapon a rating based on how much I like it. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's start off things with a blast, shall we? Introducing the Fat Man. This big boy shoots mini nukes, which are far more powerful than your average explosive. It's one of the most iconic weapons in the Fallout franchise, and for good reason, because it's stupid fun to use and makes a huge boom. A nuke launcher like this would surely be devastating on the battlefield, but the actual design is heavily flawed and makes no sense whatsoever. Instead of being a rocket or a missile, the mini nuke is literally just a bomb, and the launcher itself is pneumatically powered, meaning its power source is compressed air. So instead of striking the projectile and making it expose some kind of exhaust, the fat man is just throwing nukes like a slingshot. I'm no physicist, but I don't think this thing could actually generate enough force to launch a mini nuke for any worthwhile distance. Even in game, we can see that the projectile doesn't travel too far, maybe a hundred yards at most? And if you do manage to stretch out its range with that perfect angle, then the nuke won't even detonate, because Fallout's engine can't render objects at that distance, which is just kinda sad. Either way though, I'm sure we can all agree that this is not the most efficient nor safest design for a nuke launcher. The smallest nuke launcher ever made was known as the Davy Crockett, which is a giant stationary recoilless rifle, or you know, I would just call it a rocket launcher. Like every other launcher, the projectile is self-propelled to maximize its effective range, and this one could go over a mile. After all, you'll want to have plenty of distance between yourself and a nuclear payload, but even a mile wasn't all that safe in this case. I'm assuming that's where the idea for the Fat Man came from, but this one was scaled down and made into a shoulder-mounted infantry launcher, which is pretty cool and all, but the concept of safety was completely launched out the window here. I don't know why, but whoever designed this decided to make it into a close-quarters weapon, which is super goofy and extremely dangerous. I'm sure we've all accidentally killed ourselves with the Fat Man due to misjudging the explosive radius. But when you do learn how to use it without killing yourself, then I will have to admit, it is very badass, and quite the spectacle to admire. I assume this weapon was designed to be used by power armor units, and in that case, I guess it'd be uh, a little bit safer to operate, but still, that danger is way too close for comfort. Also, this weapon doesn't really look like it'd be a pre-war invention. This rusty cheese grater looks more like something some scavenger crafted up in their shack. And that would explain why it's got such a primitive pneumatically powered system. But no, it is a pre-war weapon, which doesn't seem right at all because of how crude and unsafe it is. I don't see why the US military would opt for such an inferior design when they obviously had the technology and resources to make proper rocket launchers. It's like they had a bunch of leftover nuclear bombs and just wanted something cheap to get rid of them, but they decided to make it the most ridiculous design ever? If the Fat Man was a post-war invention, then I might have let it slide, but it isn't, so it's ruined and unimmersive. Dare I say, the Fat Man shouldn't exist in Fallout. Or at least, the lore should be changed so that it is a post-war, homemade weapon. It doesn't change the fact that it's extremely dangerous to the user, but you could make up an excuse saying it was made by a crazy raider gang who discovered a stockpile of mini nukes. At least, that makes a, a little bit more sense. I still think an infantry nuke launcher is an awesome concept, but the Fat Man is not a feasible design. I think a better option would have been an actual rocket launcher. That way, it could have been called the Crockett Launcher. 
That would have been perfect. Huge missed potential right there, and I'm heavily disappointed that the developers didn't capitalize on that opportunity. I really hate to say it, but the Fat Man's design and lore simply makes zero sense whatsoever, so it deserves a big, fat rating of zero bottle caps. On to the next one. I would say the missile launcher is better, but at the same time, it also manages to be leagues worse. Upon first glance, it looks alright, but it's an absolute disaster. The, uh, the reload mechanism is unique for sure. Instead of loading it directly from the front or back, the front half of the barrel flips up. So, it's a, uh, break action missile launcher. Interesting. Not sure if that'd be a good design, but, uh, whatever. Uh, the real issue I have with this weapon is when you upgrade it to hold multiple missiles. That's when things start getting a, a little funky. The upgrades are referred to as triple and quad barrels, but they don't actually add on more barrels at all. Upgrading the missile launcher to hold three gives it this weird horizontal magazine. Uh, that's right, a magazine-fed missile launcher. I don't know how that would work, but if someone could figure it out, then, I mean, yeah, it's a fantastic idea. More DACA is always a good thing. But this mechanism seems way too complicated for just three missiles. It would be so much easier to give the launcher multiple barrels. You know, just like the name of the upgrade implies. The best example I can think of is the M202 Flash. It's basically just a big rectangular prism with four separate barrels. It's simple, and it works. For the most part. The funny thing is, the Fallout 4 missile launcher does attempt to mimic the M202, but it doesn't actually add more barrels. They're cut off halfway, so they aren't full working barrels. It almost looks like it'd be uh, some kind of offset four-shot cylinder, so you'd expect it to be a rotating mechanism. But no, that's not how it works. It's completely static. When firing these missiles, they just magically go off. They, they don't even use the barrel to launch from they shoot out of the cylinder like when a revolver chain fires but it's not a malfunction that's just how the weapon was designed i <laughs> i don't even have a clue how these missiles would be set off there is no striker to ignite them they just jump right on out like sentient beings even if these smart missiles could self-ignite the back blast would melt your face off but thankfully there is no such thing as back blast in fallout 4 crisis averted everyone everything's fine Nothing's wrong. Go home. Besides all that nonsense, the actual speed of the projectile is painfully slow. This is a common trope in many video games, but rockets and missiles are much faster than many games depict them as. If you shoot at a target about 100 yards away, it'll be blown sky high in the blink of an eye. I don't like the excuse of, oh well, it's for gameplay purposes, because the gameplay would feel way better if the velocity was increased. That also means I can use the missile launcher more effectively for its intended purpose to hit armored targets at range. And one last thing, the missile launcher is capable of locking onto humanoid targets, which isn't how they work in real life. They can only lock onto vehicles, but the Fallout 4 missile launcher can do it all. Maybe there's some kind of advanced heat-seeking technology here, so I'll let that part slide. But at the same time, the technology isn't so advanced because the range is severely limited. You have to get up close and personal to be able to lock onto anything, making this missile launcher a close quarters weapon. It's even more apparent that this is meant for close range because you can mount a bayonet on this thing. So you can run around and stab people with a missile launcher, then blow them up at point blank. You better have some tough power armor for that tactic. But yeah, the missile launcher is awful in every aspect. It somehow manages to mess up literally every single detail that makes a missile launcher a missile launcher. I show no mercy. Zero out of five bottle caps, because there's no chance this thing would work. It doesn't get much better from here. The Broadsider is another cursed heavy weapon that doesn't understand the fundamentals of how artillery works. It's a unique naval cannon that has been modified to be carried by hand. Is it impractical? Yes. Is it super cool? Also yes. Would it actually work? No. But not for the reason you may think. Sure, it's extremely heavy, and I doubt anyone could handle carrying around a literal cannon in their hands, but that's a problem with Fallout 4 in general. You don't need to wear power armor or have super strength to use heavy weapons, which is dumb because that's how it worked in previous games. But anyway, the main reason why this cannon is a catastrophic failure is because your character doesn't know how to load it properly, and it also defies the law of conservation of mass. When reloading this cannon, 
your character only shoves in the big cannonball, and that's it. No powder or anything, yet the cannon still manages to work. No powder means no spark. No spark means no boom. And no boom means the big cannonball doesn't move. Yet, in Fallout 4, it just works. I'm not sure if it's due to laziness or incompetence, but they simply didn't include that one crucial step in the reload animation. Even worse, this thing has an option for an extended magazine, and uh, I don't even want to speculate about that, but let's assume it's possible. Even then, when you reload the cannon, your character still only loads in one cannonball, and somehow you can shoot three before having to reload again. The only way to justify all this is by saying that the broadsider runs on pure magic. I would say Pixie does too, but your character doesn't even load that into the cannon. In reality, it's just that the developers didn't care to include proper animations for it. And that's too bad really, because the broadsider is pretty fun to use. It could have been such a cool and quirky heavy weapon, but the fact that your character doesn't know how to properly operate it absolutely ruins any possibility of immersion. Zero out of five bottle caps. Moving on. Another nautical themed weapon we have is the harpoon gun. I had to do some research on this one, and I found out that it's based on the greener percussion harpoon gun, which is a relic of the 1800s. You'll notice that the Fallout 4 harpoon gun is noticeably bulkier than its real-life counterpart, and there's a bunch of mods added on to make it portable, since it's an antique. I'm guessing the trappers must have found this in a museum in Far Harbor. It's an odd choice to arm yourself with, but I mean, sure, why not? In an apocalypse, you gotta use whatever you can find, even if you can barely carry it. What I really don't understand, though, is why they completely messed up how the weapon functions. This harpoon gun is supposed to be a muzzle loader, meaning you load the harpoon from the front end of the barrel. It's super simple, but the Fallout 4 harpoon gun goes out of its way to add in unnecessary modifications. Now it's got this weird, like, sliding door mechanism which you use to load in the harpoons. And because of this new mechanism, the harpoons had to be downsized to fit in. Also, your character's hand phases right through the handle when reloading, and in general the animation just looks jagged and uncomfortable, which further proves how inconvenient this design would be. Overall, it just seems like a total downgrade, and I don't know why this design decision was made. The worst part though, is the same problem that happened with the broadsider. There's no propellant to actually launch the projectile. The harpoons just magically jump out of the barrel after pulling the trigger, and for some reason it makes this big clanking sound. It's clear that not a whole lot of thought was put into this design, just like many of the other weapons at Fallout. The devs took a perfectly functioning weapon and mucked it up for no reason. At this point, it seems they're going out of their way to make these weapons as non-functional and unimmersive as possible. It's almost insulting to our intelligence. And for that, I'll have to give the harpoon gun a whopping zero out of five bottle caps. We're just on a big losing streak right now. I sure hope it gets better. Uh, let's move on to the flamer. It's another big disappointment, and I could never bring myself to use this thing. Its damage is pitiful, and the range is laughable too. You literally have to be standing right next to someone to hit them. Anything beyond 15 feet, and your flame dissipates. Flamethrowers do indeed have limited range, but their maximum effective range would be closer to 50 feet, not 15. Even when you are close enough, it's barely able to cook their meat to medium rare. You have to slow roast them for 8 hours like a crock pot if you want to deal any considerable damage. In reality, flamethrowers are absolutely terrifying. One quick burst is all it takes to send someone into a frenzied panic as they try desperately to extinguish their burning flesh. Uh, anyway, you definitely don't want to be anywhere close to one, but in Fallout 4, you can use the flamer as a nice little hand warmer for your enemies. I think we can blame the poor performance on the fact that it's supposed to be a handmade weapon. One made by the Forged, I would assume. It looks like it's made out of spare parts they found in their factory, so I commend them for being resourceful, but still, it's not a very great weapon. By default, it uses regular fuel as ammunition, so I'm guessing that refers to gasoline, probably? If so, that explains why the range is so short, but you can upgrade it to have a napalm tank. Although, that doesn't actually change what ammunition you load into the flamer, it just magically upgrades the damage is all. Even with that upgrade, the flamer is still not very good, and the flame it puts out is rather lame. This thing looks like a cigarette lighter in comparison to the chaotic fireball of a real flamethrower. It's just pathetic. But besides the poor performance, 
The overall design isn't too practical either. Unlike historical flamethrowers, this is an all-in-one package. The fuel tank on this one is huge, so you can bet that'll weigh you down when it's at full capacity. I mean, the fuel tanks should be this big, but real flamethrowers have the fuel tanks separated so they can be carried on the back, which helps alleviate a lot of unnecessary fatigue on the arms. Other than the weight, it takes up way too much space, and it looks like you'd be banging your legs up against the fuel tank when trying to run. An all-in-one flamethrower is a decent idea, but they have to be much smaller and lighter to be usable. If the devs really wanted a heavy flamer, then they should have just went with the traditional format. It would work great with power armor too. You'd be able to carry hundreds of pounds of fuel on your back, so you wouldn't run out so quickly. That's another thing though. The Fallout 4 flamer has a surprisingly large fuel capacity, especially if you upgrade it. You can hold down the trigger for like a minute straight, which is insanely efficient when you consider that real flamethrowers with tanks this big only last a few seconds. The trade-off for that capacity is the low damage output. It may be a long-lasting flame, but it's not very hot. I'd much rather have it the other way around, though. What's especially interesting about how the flamer works is that when you reload it, you only replace the small tank on top of the weapon. Your character doesn't touch the big tanks at the bottom. So, what are those being used for? Are they purely decorational? There must be something in there. The reload animation implies that the small tank is the one that holds the fuel, but you'd expect the bigger tanks to be the one that hold the fuel, while the small tank should be the one that holds all the pressurized gas. That part definitely got mixed up. Overall, the flamer is a huge, confusing mess, and it doesn't know what it wants to be. Yet again, I'll have to give this one zero out of my bottle caps. Hopefully, we can find a weapon which deserves at least one bottle cap. <laughs> Come on, it, it, it can't be that hard. Don't get your hopes up, because the minigun isn't any better. On the surface, it looks okay, but it's one of the worst designs in Fallout 4. You'd expect the minigun to be among the most overpowered guns in the whole game, but no, the devs butchered this one. It has the lowest base damage in the entire game, and it's not very good at shredding enemies either, because the accuracy is absolutely abysmal. You have to use it in close quarters exclusively, or else you'll just be wasting all your ammo. Don't say it's for balancing purposes, because it's extremely underpowered, and that's not very balanced if you ask me. The reason why the devs made this weapon so weak is because they wanted to make it an early game weapon, which you get at the Museum of Freedom. It was only put there to wow new players and give them an epic, scripted fight with the Deathclaw to catch their attention right at the start of the game. To keep the player from being insanely overpowered at level 1, while still keeping the minigun and power armor set piece, the devs decided to neuter the minigun's damage profile. The only time it's ever useful is during that first quest, and after that, it quickly gets outperformed by anything else. It's simply not worth its own weight, and the ammo is a pain to obtain too. It uses the special 5mm cartridge. It's a fantasy round that only exists in Fallout. In New Vegas, it was used in the minigun and assault carbine, so I would assume it's similar to 556, but it's probably a little bit lighter with higher velocity because it has a special armor penetration effect. But all of that was thrown out when making Fallout 4. This time around, the 5mm looks to be similar in size to the 762 round, and it doesn't have any special penetration effect, so why not just go with the 762 then? At this point, there's no reason for the 5mm round to exist, and honestly, I think it should be retconned. The minigun should have been chambered in 762 from the start, you know, just like the real M134 minigun, which it's obviously based off of. That way, it'd be dealing a ton more damage, and it would be an absolute menace on the battlefield. Besides just the ammo, the minigun also needs a way higher fire rate too. It's multitudes slower than its real-life counterpart, and I'm not sure what it is exactly, so if anyone wants to do the math, then let me know. But I know it's definitely not anywhere near the 6,000 rounds per minute that it should be at. The fire rate is slowed down even further thanks to its unnecessary spin-up delay. It's a common misconception seen in many video games, but miniguns don't actually take two whole seconds to spin up. They are powered by electric motors, which make the barrel spin at a constant rate. All it takes is one rotation, and due to its fast rotary speed, it fires basically instantly. I'm also not sure where the battery for this minigun would be at. Maybe it's uh, somewhere inside the gun itself? It does look to be an all-in-one package, and I'm not going to rag on it just for being a handheld minigun. 
While that is also a trope in many video games, it makes sense for it to exist in Fallout because of power armor. What I don't like about this portable design though, is the drum magazine. It's got the same issues that I mentioned about the flamer, that is, the drum will be banging up against your legs as you try to walk around. But of course, since this is a video game, your legs clip right through it like nothing happened. When reloading this magazine, you don't actually do anything to suggest you're reloading. In first person, you just shake the gun around a little bit and then continue firing. And in third person, you can see your character take out half of the drum and then place it right back in. It's uh, definitely an interesting contraption because half of it is fixed into the gun itself. But I was expecting the whole thing to be detachable. It would have been so much easier to make the ammo belt feed from a backpack instead. And it's not like Bethesda doesn't know any better, because the minigun in Fallout 3 does come with an ammo backpack. They deliberately downgraded their design, and I don't see why. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Bethesda's motto is, if it ain't broke, then I'm gonna break it. And they broke the minigun. It's so sad, truly. It could have been one of the best weapons in the entire game, but its performance is awful. The implementation is lame and overall, the design is convoluted. Because of all that, I have no choice but to give the minigun zero out of five bottle caps. For another multi-barreled weapon, we've also got the Gatling Laser. It's just like the minigun, but it's powered with fusion cores, so it shoots out laser beams. Curiously enough, it's named as a Gatling Laser, but it functions more like the minigun. The Gatling gun is powered by a crank, which the user has to turn to get the weapon to fire, but the Gatling laser shoots automatically, just like a minigun. I guess it should be called the mini laser then, but that doesn't sound right, so actually, I can see why they went with the Gatling laser instead. It just sounds better. Being a total fantasy weapon, I can't spend too much time examining its functionality, but funnily enough, it seems like it could be a more reasonable design than the regular minigun. The best advantage it has is the way it's loaded, all you have to do is plop in a small fusion core and you've got 500 shots. But the downside is that you're using your precious fusion cores to power this thing. Is it worth it? Not really. The overall performance is similar to the regular minigun, but it's using ammunition that is far more valuable. It definitely needs a higher DPS to justify the cost, because it's only a feasible option in the late game when you have tons of fusion cores. But at that point, the damage output is barely average, so you might as well use anything else. Other than that, it still has many shared issues with the regular minigun, including a low fire rate, an unnecessary spin-up delay, and god-awful accuracy. Also, the overall look of the weapon could use an upgrade. It's much too blocky for my taste. It looks like a Minecraft weapon mod. It's pretty obvious that they took assets from the laser rifle and then slapped them on here. I also think it's odd that all the parts and wires are exposed to the elements. Seems like it would be prone to malfunction, and... That doesn't seem very characteristic for a futuristic laser gun. I can only speculate so much though. At the very least, the Gatling laser isn't quite as egregious as the other heavy weapons, but I still don't like it too much. I think it's about time I show an act of kindness. I rate the Gatling laser 1 out of 5 bottle caps. Great job guys, we finally did it. We finally found a weapon that deserves at least one bottle cap. Now I can rest easy. <laughs> To finish things off, we have the Junk Jet. Since a lot of the weapons in this game are pure garbage and wouldn't function, you'd be better off throwing them at your opponent to deal blunt damage. This contraption is designed to eat any garbage and then throw it out at high velocity. So, like a railgun, but with any random object. I can appreciate the comedic relief, but at the same time, I've literally never used this weapon because it's too silly. Also, you have to feed it your precious junk. And the last thing I want to do is throw away all my valuable crafting materials. To be fair, it wasn't made to be realistic at all, but I'm not going to spare it from a low rating because of that. It's a silly gimmick weapon that's not actually useful in combat. Putting this gun into the game was a waste of time and resources, and I'm willing to bet that 99% of players don't ever use it. I don't even want to spend time speculating on how it works. It's obviously meant as a joke, and it belongs in a dumpster. Zero out of five bottle caps. And finally, that wraps up everything wrong with the heavy weapons in Fallout 4. It was way longer than I expected. The more I studied the weapons, the more flaws I found. I still might have missed a few details though, so if there's anything else you can add, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'm also interested to see what you'll have to say about the weapons designs in Fallout 4. 
What ratings would you give to each weapon? And how would you make them better? Feel free to have your own rants in the comments. I'm sure it'll be fun. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, then you ought to nuke that like button. I'm already working on the next Fallout gun rants, so if you want to be alerted when those come out, then make sure to subscribe and smack that bell icon to get notified. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next video. This rusty cheese grater looks like my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, this <laughs> this rusty tree <laughs> I can't do this dude this shit's too funny this shit this dude I can't take this shit anymore anyway